Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to be covering some of the cost of living that you can expect in one of my favorite neighborhoods in the South Metro Denver being Parker, Colorado. If you're into that and want to learn more, stick around. I'm going to unpack all of that coming up next. Welcome to the channel, everybody. If this is your first time here, my name is Bill Knapp. I'm a residential realtor here in the Denver metro area. I cover everywhere from the North Denver all the way down to South Denver and now also Boulder. Uh, but today I'm gonna be focusing my time and efforts into the Parker, Colorado area. Also, while I'm describing this information, I'm gonna give you a quick heads up that I do these videos uh, mostly because I get these questions quite a lot from people that are moving into the area. I've also been very fortunate to connect with a lot of families and individuals when they're looking online. They find me on YouTube and give me a call. So if that's of interest to you and you wanna see about possibly working together, all my information will be listed below. Give me a call, text, or email. We can hop on a quick call or a Zoom chat see if working together might be a good fit. And lastly, before I jump into all the details on these cost of living here in Parker, if I say anything today where you have a question, feel free to leave me a comment. I will respond to you as fast as I can. Also, if you find any bit of information that I'm providing helpful, do me a favor, give me a like or a subscribe. It really helps me out with the algorithm. Would greatly appreciate it. All right, to get us started, if you're not familiar with where Parker, Colorado is located, on the map, you can see that Parker is located in the southeastern corner of the Denver metro area, which is pretty optimally placed due to the highways. This puts Parker at about 35 minutes or so up to downtown Denver and also out to Denver International Airport, making it a very eastern but semi-central location, which is very appealing to a lot of people, which is why I'm doing this video because a lot of people have questions about these costs. Also, if you have not caught my video previously recorded from this one, it is the pros and cons of living in, in Parker, Colorado. I highly recommend checking it out just to give you a wide overview of what you can expect for the area and then couple it with this video so you can see the cost with the actual living, it makes it a whole thing, you know, full picture. To get us started, what I like to do is use a national scale as a metric. So using all the other continental United States, using a scale of 100% will compare Parker, Colorado to the national average. And based on betterplaces.com, the average for Parker compared to the national average is at 142%, which means it is approximately 42% more expensive to live in Parker, Colorado versus the rest of the national average. Now with that in mind, in relation to other surrounding neighborhoods, Parker is actually a bit more affordable than other neighborhoods such as Highlands Ranch, Western Centennial, Castle Pines North, Castle Pines Village, and Lone Tree. If you go up towards Cherry Creek and uh, Cherry Hills Village, it, there is no way. It is so much more expensive there than Parker. However, Parker is more expensive than say Eastern Centennial and Aurora. So on the scale of things, it's actually quite affordable, but looking at the national average, it can be a little bit more affordable or way too expensive depending on which city and state you're coming from. Now these costs for living are actually calculated using a bunch of different metrics. So I'm gonna highlight some of the more common ones just because they're the ones that most everybody thinks about when moving into a location. Uh, and there's gonna be some variable costs that I cover towards the end. The first cost that everybody always asks me about is about the cost of living for the housing and how much can they expect to pay when purchasing a home or a condo or a townhome in the Parker area. So what I've done is I looked over the stats and the averages on current data year over year from last year to this year. And as of right now, the median home price of a single family home, which will get you about a three bed, three bath home in Parker, Colorado at around 1,700 to 2,200 square feet on the inside is about $700,000. Now moving over to townhomes, what you can expect as far as a median price currently as of shooting this video today, the median cost is $493,000, which will get you a two to three bed townhome, which you'll have a neighbor ideally, on, well, most likely on either side of you. Ideally, you'll get an end unit. Average square footage inside of there will be anywhere from 1,700 to about 2,800 square feet or so. And most of those townhomes have HOAs, which I'll cover in a little bit. Then you can expect median cost for condominiums being two to three beds or one to two beds for $392,000. Uh, 
and that'll get you anywhere from about a thousand square feet or so to about 1800 square feet for some of the larger condos and those also have HOAs which I'll cover in just a minute. Now when you make a purchase of that volume, I'm really big on helping educate my people about the return on their investment or the ROI. And as of current stats right now, Parker is averaging about 6% appreciation year over year, which means it's holding its value really well. When you get into a more affluent, expensive price point, you can expect that appreciation to be a bit smaller because a million dollar property appreciates a little bit slower than you will see in a $400,000 property. But that said, Parker is comprised of everything from entry-level condos and townhomes to mid-level homes to larger like signature level homes and then luxury and luxury plus which has equestrian side uh, big yards. We also have rural areas outside in Parker so there's a lot of opportunity to make a great investment. Now when you buy a property you're going to have property taxes and one of the great pieces of news I get to offer you is that Colorado has the third lowest property tax in the entire continental U.S. The only other two states that are less expensive for property taxes are Alabama and Hawaii. For Colorado, we are currently averaging 0.51% on property taxes. When that comes into play regarding your home, depending on the amount of square footage that you have, you can plan on your property taxes to be anywhere from about $2,800 or so up to $5,000 plus depending on the actual finished square footage of your property. And moving on into the homeowners association costs that I referenced just a little bit ago. These are actually really pretty affordable in the Parker area. If you go downtown Denver, you can expect some exorbitant HOA fees, which cover quite a lot. But these down in Parker are some of the lowest that I've seen in the area. The neighborhood HOAs on some properties are only $300 per year, which comes out to about $25 a month. If you jump into a bigger complex that happens to have some pools or playgrounds or just some more amenities involved with the neighborhood, those are going at about $100 to $200 per month. And then if you have condos and townhomes, I'm seeing those anywhere from $150 to $280 per month, but that usually has a lot of inclusions. So it's really important to work with whoever you're working with on your purchase or if you're doing your research to see what those HOA costs actually involve so you're making sure you get a lot of bang for your buck. Now let's say that you're not ready to purchase, which is entirely okay. Maybe you just wanna rent in the Parker area for a little while. That's fantastic and I highly recommend it so you kind of know what you're getting into before you actually make the purchase. For that reference point, there are approximately 75% homes owned in Parker compared to 25% which are rentals. So there's not a huge rental pool, but Parker's pretty large and it keeps growing, so there's plenty to actually choose from. So for your general reference, a good base point on what to expect when renting a single family home, which will be anywhere from three beds plus and two bathrooms plus uh, in Parker, you'll be paying on average about $2,800 to $4,000 plus depending on the size of the property and where it's located. This excludes the luxury communities. Those vary a lot depending on custom size home and availability, but if you're curious about it high level, you can expect anywhere from about 5,000 to 5,500 plus for those luxury community homes. Moving over to townhomes and condominiums, these are obviously gonna be a bit more affordable and those tend to range based on current stats at about $1,700 or so for a two bedroom plus in a townhome or condo up to about $2,800 or so, depending on if it's a newer complex, what kind of amenities are involved in the size of the actual unit. Also, the location of the property you're renting tends to carry a bit more weight. So if it's in a really good location or if it's got a home with a beautiful big yard and it's really updated, those tend to be a bit more. But for your general base points, use these prices. That's kind of what you can expect. Now that you've made either a purchase or you're into a rental, there is always gonna be some of those hidden costs being like your utilities, your cost of living, with groceries, gas, and all that good stuff. And these are all highly variable. There's no way for me to actually categorize that efficiently. So what I've done is put them in like a general average based on what I've learned from other people who have bought recently, um, from my own personal experiences, and people that I know who are also renting in the area. So here we go. The first one that most people ask about will be what is my gas and electric bill? And from what I'm seeing on the average, that can range to about $108 to $115 or so per month. The next one is really kind of personal depending on your plan, but that's what does my phone cost, my phone subscription or whatever, and generally you can carry that from wherever you're coming from to this location. On average, from what I'm understanding, that phone bill will run about $145 to $180 per month depending on how many people are on your plan. 
Similar with your Xfinity or your cable or your internet bill, those packages are all over the place now with the advent of streaming and streaming services. So whether you're a Disney Mandalorian person or if you're more into like, you know, the Avengers or if you're an HBO or a sports package or you're getting your Big Ten network, that's entirely up to you. From what I understand though, using a basic service package with a decent internet connection with most people are using because of home offices, that bill will run you on average about $110 to $120 per month. With any equipment rental, you can expect that to go a little bit higher to about $160 to $180 per month. Or you can cut the cord entirely and do something where I've heard people do it for $60 a month. So it's, it's highly variable, but these are some high level baselines for you. Another one where I get a lot of questions will be, what will my water bill be per month? Because Colorado is a landlocked state and we have had droughts in the past and we're heavily dependent on annual precipitation, snow and rainfall. Because we have really good reservoirs and a good wastewater system, our water is not very expensive, but on the average, it's about a hundred or so dollars per month, depending on the size of your yard. If you have a very big yard, which several of my friends and clients do, that can go up to about 800 to a thousand dollars per month, depending on the acreage of your yard. So when you're purchasing, keep that in mind because the amount of water that you have to put on your grass does add up over time. The next item I always recommend people look into is the cost of gas, which fluctuates all over the nation. But as of today's shooting, the average cost per gallon is about $3.40. So if you're a 14 to 16 gallon car, which is a midsize SUV, your end actual fill up per month will be um, about $60 to $120, depending on how far you're driving. And a new flexible uh, variable cost that I added in because this has come up quite a lot. Colorado is a big pet state. We have people here with one, two, four dogs. Uh, some people have several cats. So veterinary care and medicine is a big thing to consider. And for that general reference point, for a mid to average size animal, for an actual visit to a vet, that's averaging anywhere from $65 to $100 in the park or area. Highly variable, of course, but people ask the question, so there you have it. Outside of those usual ordinary living expenses, there's always gonna be the things like, do I need to buy a ski pass? If you're moving to Colorado and you're big into the outdoors, you'll probably spend a lot of money on new outdoor equipment if you don't already have some. Uh, people do park passes, state passes, federal passes, just because there's so much to see and do here. Also, the outdoor activities in Colorado are vast and they're year round, whether you're a golfer or you're an outdoorsy uh, music person, or if you want to go and do fine dining, there's something here for everyone. So your flexible budget, that's another one just to carve out and make sure that whatever you purchase or rent doesn't eat into your actual personal hobbies and your interests. And the final thing that I recommend for people to consider when moving here, if you have kids and you're looking at the school system, the Douglas County school system is in included in the Parker area with really great schools that are offered to the public based on wherever you are in school zones. However, I know some people are really adamant about doing private schooling or uh, religious schooling, which is entirely fine. Those do come with some added costs. And from what I understand, that cost is very different from school to school. So you're gonna have to do a bit of research on that. And for those reference points, I recommend going to greatschools.org or over to privateschoolreview.com so you can figure out what you're looking at as far as actual cost for your schooling. And that wraps up my high level estimates on cost of living for the Parker, Colorado area. Hopefully I gave you some details or information that was helpful. If I did, do me a favor again, please leave me a like, a comment uh, below. If you're liking what you're seeing and you want to stay up to date on all my new videos, definitely hit the bell notification and subscribe. It really helps me out with the algorithm. Also, I am a full-time realtor for this area. I really enjoy connecting with people through this platform. My contact information is below. Give me a call, text, or email. We can see about hopping onto a quick call or a Zoom chat and see about possibly working together and if that might be a good fit. Thank you as always for sticking around. My name is Bill Knapp, residential realtor in the Denver metro area, covering everywhere from Boulder to the South Metro Denver neighborhoods. I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you all on the next one.